commentary. The Bodhisattva who has brought forth the mind does so because he desires to know that within a single world system there comes into being all world systems. Within a single world system, in every particle of dust, immeasurable world systems come into being. This is because a single world system is the seed for all world systems. So it says, he wishes to know that within a single world system, there comes into being all world systems. Within a single world system, there can be produced the substance of all world systems. And he desires to know that all world systems are without a substantial nature. The Bodhisattva knows that all world systems are without a substantial nature. They are produced from from causes and conditions and destroyed means of causes and conditions. They come into being drought are destroyed and become empty. Over and over again, world systems are not ultimate and indestructible. Because he desires in a single thought to exhaustively know all the base and greatest world systems without obstruction, he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. The Bodhisattva uses the consideration of a single thought to exhaustively know all the vast and great world systems without obstruction. It's just exhaustive means exhausting space and pervading the drama realm. Within a single thought, he comprehends all world systems coming into being, dwelling, destruction, and becoming empty. Therefore, he brings forth the mind for the unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. Disciple of the Buddha, moreover, putting this analogy aside, let's take this analogy and put it aside for now. Don't consider it. We will discuss another analogy. Suppose there is a person who, in a single thought moment, is able to know the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of Asan Kiyas world systems in the East, and each thought is like this. In every thought compass of world systems in the East, so the exhaustion of Asan Kiyas compass means for immeasurable Asan Kiyas compass that long a time. There is no one who is able to know the limit of the number of this compass. There is not a single person who is able to know the limit of this number. And suppose there is a second person who in a single thought is able to know the number of compass a former person knew in a Samkhya compass the same way. This band, this until it relaxes, it reaches the tenth reason uh, the tenth person in the south west and north the four intermediaries above and below it is also like this there are also people like this disciple of the buddha this limit of the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of those asamkhya world systems in the ten directions can be known their boundaries can still be known Yet, the limit of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva, who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, as for the limits of all the good rules planted by the Bodhisattva, who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, they cannot be known. There is no person who is able to know boundaries. Why? What is the reason for this? Because the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. There is nothing fixed about the Bodhisattva. He has no fixed limit, no fixed boundary, and no fixed rule. He brings forth the mind for Anusara Samyak Sambuddhi, only for the sake of knowing the number of compass of coming into being and destruction of those world systems, how they dwell, how they are destroyed, and how become empty. He beings for the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi in order to totally 
know the compass of coming into being and destruction of one world systems exhaustively without remainder. All this he wishes to understand without the least exception. Therefore, he brings forth the might for unsurpassed right and equal body enlightenment. Sutra, that is to say, he knows that long compass are equal to short compass and short compass are equal to long compass. A single compass is equal to countless compass and countless compass are equal to a single compass. Compass which have Buddhas are equal to compass which do not have Buddhas and compass which do not have Buddhas are equal to compass which have Buddha. Within a compass with a single Buddha, there are ineffable Buddhas and within a compass with the ineffable Buddhas, there is a single Buddha. Measurable compass are equal to measureless compass and measureless compass are equal to measurable compass. Inexhaustible compass are equal to inexhaustible compass, and inexhaustible compass are equal to exhaustible compass. Ineffable compass are equal to a single thought, and a single thought is equal to ineffable compass. All compass enter non compass, and non compass enter all compass, because he desires to within a single thought exhaustively know the compass of coming into being and destruction of all world systems in the past, present, and in the future. He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. This is called the adornment of great vows of first bringing forth the mind, the spiritual penetration and wisdom which comprehend all kalpa. Commentary The Bodhisattva brings forth the body mind because he wishes to know that the numbers of all compass, whether long or short, are equal. That is to say, he knows that long compass are equal to short compass. Long compass are not apart from a single thought, and short compass are also not apart from a single thought. Within a single thought, they are equal and non-obstructive, that is, long and short are not different. Long compass are equal to short compass, and short compass are equal to long compass. If long compass are equal to short compass, isn't it the case that short compass should be equal to long compass? Yes, it's the same as ice is water and water is ice. And affliction is body and body is affliction. Affliction is equal to body and body is equal to affliction. The principles are the same. A single compass is equal to countless compass. A single compass is a compass and countless compass are also compass and within them basically time doesn't matter. And therefore it says countless compass are equal to a single compass. Compass which have Buddhas are equal to compass which do not have Buddhas. Those compass which have times when Buddhas come into the world and those compass which do not have a time when the Buddha comes into the world are also the same and equal and compass which do not have Buddhas are equal to compass which have Buddhas within a compass with a single Buddha they are ineffable Buddhas they are all equal and within a compass with the ineffable Buddhas there is a single Buddha they are also equal. Measurable compass are equal to measureless compass, and measureless compass are equal to measurable compass. Exhaustible compass are equal to inexhaustible compass, and inexhaustible compass are equal to exhaustible compass. This is having a mind without discrimination. If you are able to have a mind without discrimination, then everything is equal also. Ineffable compass are equal to a single thought. The length of time of ineffable compass is equal to the time of a single thought. And a single thought is equal to ineffable compass. All compass enter non-compass. All compass are able to reach 
So the time when there are no compass and non compass enter all compass. So all compass and non compass are equal because he desires to within a single thought. The Bodhisattva wants within a single thought to exhaustively know the cause and conditions of the number of compass of coming into being, drowning and destruction and being empty of all the world systems in the past present and the future and in the future through the three periods of time he wants to know this because of these reasons he brings forth the mind for a new sarasamya sambuddhi this is called the adornment of great vows of first bringing forth the mind this is the wondrous functioning of the great vows and adornment of the bodhisattva who has first brought forth the body mind the spiritual penetration and wisdom which comprehend all compass commentary disciple of the buddha putting this analogy aside suppose there is a person who in a single thought moment is able to know all the various different understandings of all living beings in a samkhya world systems in the east and he does so in thought after thought Resulting a Sankhya compass. Suppose there is a second person who, within a single thought moment, is able to know all the different understandings of the living beings which the first person knew in a Sankhya compass, and he too does so, exhausting a Sankhya compass. In the same way, spend this until it reaches the tenth person in the south, west, and north. The four intermediaries, the diaries above and below. It is also like this. Disciple of the Buddha, the limits of the various different understandings of those living beings in the ten directions can be known, but no one is able to know the limits of the merit and virtue and good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anusara Samyak Sambuddhi. Commentary Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva again calls out Disciple of the Buddha putting this analogy aside don't bring God this analogy at all but let us consider another analogy suppose these uh, there is a reason basically there isn't such a person but let's suppose there is such a person who in a single thought moment a very short period of time is able to know all the various different understandings of all living beings in Assam Kiyaya world systems in the East. He is able to know all the living beings in immeasurable number of world systems in the East and all their various different understandings, all their different discriminative understandings and he does so in thought after thought exhausting a Samkhya compass and uh, suppose there is a second person who within a single thought moment is able to know all the different understanding of the living beings which the first person knew in a Samkhya compass in a single thought he knows as much as the first person knew in a Samkhya compass an inconceivable long time. He's able to know in a single thought all living beings different understandings. He understands their principles, each one of which is different. And he too in this way does so exhausting a Samkhya Kampa. In the same way expand this unit it reaches the tenth person. In the south, west, and north, the four intermediaries above and below, it is also like this. Disciple of the Buddha, the limits of the various different understandings of those living beings in the ten directions can be known. Ultimately, you can know them, you can know their limits, but no one is able to know the limits of the merit and virtue of good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi. No one is able to know ultimately how much merit and virtue that Bodhisattva has. Sutra, why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. In order to know those living beings' understandings, 
He brings forth the mind of Vanu Sarasamyak Sambuddhi. He brings forth the mind of Vanu Sarasamyak Sambuddhi in order to exhaustively know the various different understandings of all living beings in all world systems. That is to say, because he desires to know all the different understandings without boundary. Because he desires to know a single living being's understanding, he is equal to countless living beings understandings because he desires to attain the light of expanded wisdom of ineffable different understandings because he desires to totally know each of the different understandings of the ocean of living beings exhaustively without remainder because he desires to know living beings various limitless understandings of the past present and future whether good or bad because he desires to totally know their similar understandings and their dissimilar understandings. Because he desires to totally know that understanding all is just understanding one, and understanding one is just the understanding all. Because he desires to obtain the first common powers of understanding. It is because he desires to totally know the understanding which is surpassed and the unsurpassed understanding, the understanding which has the remainder and the understanding which has no remainder, the differences of the equal understanding and the unequal understanding. It is because he desires to totally know the understanding which relies on something and the understanding which has no reliance, the understanding which is common and the uncommon understanding, the understanding which has the boundary and the understanding which has no boundary, discriminatory understandings and non-discriminatory understandings good understandings and the understandings which are not good and worldly understanding and the understandings which are beyond the world it is because he desires to obtain the unobstructed wisdom of the first common liberation of all wondrous understandings great understandings limitless understanding and the understanding of the proper position. It is because he desires to use limitless experience to totally know the realm of all living beings in the ten directions and each living being's pure understandings, defined understandings, broad understandings, general understandings, detailed understandings, and coarse understandings, exhaustively without remainder. Commentary Why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. The Bodhisattva cultivates dharma which are not fixed. It's only in order to know those living beings' understandings that he brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment. He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi in order to exhaustively know the various different understandings of all living beings in all world systems. That is to say, because he desires to know all the different understandings without boundary. The Bodhisattva also wants to know all the different dharma of understanding which have no boundary. Because he desires to know a single living being's understanding is equal to countless living beings' understandings. What a single living being is able to understand is equal to all living beings understands because he desires to attain the light of expanding wisdom of ineffable different understandings because he desires to totally know each of the different understandings of the ocean of living beings exhaustively without remainder because he desires to know living beings various limitless understandings of the past, present, and future, whether good or bad. Good is cultivating the five precepts and the ten good acts. Bad is doing the five rebellious acts and the ten evils. Also, because he desires to totally know their similar understandings and their dissimilar 
un un understandings. Won't the understanding is common understanding and non won't the understanding is uncommon understanding and non won't the understanding is uncommon understanding, because he desires to totally know that understanding all is just understanding one, and understanding one is just understanding all. Understanding one disperses into understanding all. Because he desires to obtain the first common powers of understanding, he wishes to attain the liberation of the first common ten power. It is also because he desires totally know. He wants to completely know the understanding which is surpassed, the Bodhisattva's understanding and the unsurpassed understanding, the Buddha's. Understanding and wisdom, the understanding which has the remainder, and the understanding which has no remainder. The understanding which has the remainder is what is understood by living beings of the of the nine dharma realms. Understanding that has no remainder is that which the Buddha understands. The differences of the equal understanding and The unequal understanding. It is because he desires to totally know the understanding which has no reliance. There is the understanding which has no has something which it relies upon, and the understanding which has nothing which it relies upon. Also, then the the understanding. This refers to the assembly's common understanding or their uncommon understanding, the understanding which has a boundary, discriminatory understanding and non-discriminatory understandings. This is the understanding which makes no distinctions. Good understandings and the weddings which are not good, the true understanding and the understanding which. Which is not true, and also worldly understanding, and the understandings which are beyond the world. Worldly understanding is what people, common people, understand. The understanding which is beyond the world is what sages understand. It is because he desires to obtain the unobstructed wisdom of the first commons liberation of all wondrous understandings, great understandings. Limitless understandings and the understanding of the proper position. It is also because he desires to use limitless experience to totally know the realm of all living beings in the ten directions. All the understandings of the living beings in the ten directions, and each living being's pure understandings. Also, they are defined understandings. They are common, worldly intelligence, broad. Understandings, they are vast and great understanding. They are general understandings, detailed understandings, and coarse understandings, exhaustively without remainder. He understands them all completely. He thoroughly understands them.